Um, Karen, can you talk a little bit about what, what you do, um, medically tailored meals, stories from the front line, and, yeah. and, and more importantly, I gave the statistic on medically tailored meals, where do you think things are going? Sure. So I'm going to start with a proposition, which is that we are never going to achieve our healthcare goals of lowering costs and improving outcomes without fully integrating medically tailored meals into healthcare. And my job further is going to be to convince you that it is the healthcare system's responsibility and opportunity to pay for it. So, um, and, and I know actually, that's a and actually, thing. and actually, you agreed because he just said, you know, it has to be high risk people. You have to make the business case, and that's who you're targeting. I'm so, about to. so you're fully aligned. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Karen Pearl, and I'm the president and CEO of God's Love We Deliver. I think maybe the only provider, um, maybe that you'll hear from. I'm not sure, but certainly on this panel, um, we're in New York City. We do about two million meals a year for people who are so sick that they can't shop or cook for themselves. Uh, about last year, about 7,700 people who are living with 200 different diagnoses. So it gives you a sense of our, of our capacity and growing. I also am here representing the Food is Medicine Coalition, which is a coalition of nonprofits across the country um, who do very similar work as God's Love. It would be a lot easier if we all had the same name. We don't. I'd like to say thank you very much to my local colleagues here from Community Servings and another really great friend of ours, which is the Center for Health Law and Policy Innovation at Harvard Law School, because together we work as a coalition to change policy, advance research, and do healthcare contracting. And we're learning from each other every single day. Uh, last year, we served as a coalition about 57,000 people, about 12 million meals. Just to give you a sense of what we're doing across the country. So medically tailored meals, for those of you who don't know what they are, are uh, meals that are, are start with a client who gets referred by a health care provider or a health plan, and both of those happen probably equally as much. Um, the meal, the person has a complete nutrition assessment by a registered dietitian nutritionist, and based on that assessment, a meal program is uh, designed for that particular individual based on their diagnosis, their medications, side effects, allergies, a variety of other needs. For instance, are they vegetarian or are they not? Or there was a whole variety of things. Can they chew and swallow? Maybe they need something minced or pureed. So everything gets designed. That's why we call it medically tailored, because it's designed specifically for that person and their medical situation. And then they are cooked on our, in our facilities, packaged, and delivered to people's homes. It's a, very, it's a wonderful logistic issue, which I'm happy to talk to people about. Um, but for today, I will just say that, uh, I think Gary, she said this in your opening, poor food and nutrition is at the root of so much of the chronic illness that we are talking about and trying to deal with from a cost and a health outcome perspective in this country right now. And it is absolutely mind boggling to me how few people, exceptions of my company here today, understand that food is the solution as well. And so that is the big job that we have, is to say, of course people need medications, of course they need uh, assistance from the medical establishment, but they also need access to the right food for their particular circumstances. And because we are serving the highest need, the highest cost, the highest risk people, they need the medically tailored model more than they need, let's say, just access to good healthy food, which every person should have, right? They need the food that is really designed for them that they can't necessarily get on their own, either for cost reasons or just literally so many of our clients can't get out of the house. So you can give them you know, access to SNAP or whatever, they can't exercise it. And Karen, where do you see this going? How can our you know, larger coalition of partners help move this forward? So, I've, so in, when I talk about integration, what I really mean is changing the whole system so we need to ensure that we have better education, medical education, so medical providers understand the value of food and nutrition and think about prescribing, if I may, 
the right food, the right level of food for their, their patients in addition to the medications that they might be prescribing or the tests that they might be prescribing. We need to integrate food and nutrition and the screening for, uh, for what a person needs, not only from food insecurity, but from nutrition into the medical records so that that becomes part of what gets looked at. We need to switch policy because if we do not get Medicaid, Medicare, um, and even private insurance to pay for medically tailored meals, they're not going to get to the right people. I'm very lucky I come from New York that has taken every possible innovation to heart. Um, and in New York, because we serve the, all the New York City and all the surrounding counties, we have over 30 contracts with mainstream Medicaid, long-term care providers, all looking through the lens of not only providing the food, but through value-based arrangements. So we are really changing um, the perspective. And the last piece I'll add is research. And so many of my colleagues around the country, including, including community servings, as Darius just said, have done a remarkable research showing 16% net savings through getting medically tailored meals to people. 50% reduction on hospitalizations. I mean, numbers that health plans should love. And so hopefully you're falling in love with us. Um, <laughs> and I just really want to say that we need to, uh, we need to continue to look at this from pilots, research, and policy to make sure that we're getting the evidence. We have tons of evidence now. There are many more studies underway that are showing the efficacy of the medically tailored meal intervention, which is, just to be really clear, it's the meal, of course, that is tailored, but it has the nutrition underpinning. It has the nutrition assessment, the nutrition counseling and education. Hand in hand, those two things are what are proving the results that we are getting. That's wonderful, and, and this, there's real movement here. So uh, Tufts helped catalyze the Food as Medicine Working Group in the, in the US House last year. We, we spoke on panels together about this. There's a lot of interest about actually legislation to direct CMS to test these, direct CMI to, to test these um, um, innovations. Uh, and so I think it's really exciting. Um, uh, and also uh, Congresswoman Shelley Pingree will be speaking later today. She was able to ha uh, put $25 million into the Farm Bill to test uh, the fresh food farm the healthy food prescriptions approach that's ongoing right now in our country. The state of California is putting six million dollars to in their own Medicaid dollars to test medically tailored meals in California. So I just think it's, it's it, people don't realize this is actually happening live and we need to stimulate and coordinate and, and accelerate this. Um, 